Hello, welcome to my channel, Diane's Sewing Room. And if you're watching as this has just been filmed, I hope you've had a fabulous Christmas. The rest of you may be watching later on in the year. So as I'm filming today, it's New Year's Eve. So we're in that in-between uh, stage between Christmas and New Year. And I thought I would film this today because I'm going to do a little sewing room tour. Now it is a very little one because I only have a small space here. I know that I'm lucky to have a space designated to sewing, but it is my job now, so I do need it. Um, and it did used to be one of my son's bedrooms, but him, one of them has moved out, so now they've swapped over, swapped bedrooms. My younger one's moved into the bigger bedroom, and as I say, my older one has moved out. So it is big enough for a bedroom, this, but you can only have the bed one way. And I've really tried to maximise maximize <laughs> my space in here for my sewing. So it, like I said, it is only small. I've seen quite a few videos where people have got these fabulous big studios where they can fit a sewing table in and everything. Uh, what I tend to do is I either cut out on the floor in my bedroom, which has got more space on the floor, or I use a dining room table. So I don't do my cutting in here, apart from maybe odd bits on the bench that you can see behind me. So I'm going to show you how I do things in here how I set things up and I have a new addition here. I've now got a thread holder, which was one of my Christmas presents. I've been wanting one of these. I've got thread stashed in various places, but this is now nice because it's colorful and I can grab them quickly. And I've got fabric stored in different places. Now, yesterday I had a really big clear out of fabrics because what I tried to do is save as much of my fabric as I can for bag making and smaller projects and things like that but I was getting a little bit overwhelmed because I was just trying to save everything and obviously if you sew a lot and if you're sewing for work and so on you can't save every last piece otherwise you do get to where you're drowning in it which is what was happening with me so yesterday I had a big clear out and I also bought some plastic storage tubs oh, plastic I know terrible but uh, I was looking around for boxes and I only had a few because we haven't overconsumed this Christmas or anything. So there were only a few in the house that would do for storage. I would have preferred to do that. That is what I've done in the past. I've tried to recover boxes or just use them as they are. But I did need some form of storage for my fabrics because I needed to store my latest lot of work that's just come in in my drawers here, which I will show you in a moment. So. I try not to buy the plastic, but yesterday I did succumb and buy some plastic bins, so I'll show you those in a second. So I'm going to flip you around now and show you this first bit, and off we go. So just here I've got a chest of drawers where you first come into the room, and this was housing lots of oddments of fabric, but now what I've done is I've managed to store all my upcoming work in here, which is a better use of it because it was just sort of piled up and it was getting a bit ridiculous. So I'll show you in there. I've got work stored in there and then I've got some of my sewing books on here. I have acquired two new ones just Christmas, just now. So I will be doing videos on those shortly. So I'll move this down a little so you can see. I've got some bird magazines in a box down here with their patterns. And now in all these bags in here, it's my upcoming jobs. So they're all stored nicely. They're all in bags, all in individual bags with the cotton and the pattern and the thread. And this is what I do for work. I can't get that out and show it you more clearly because like I say, this is paid work. So I can't really show this properly, but this is where I've stored everything. So this entire chest of drawers from here downwards has got my upcoming work in it. And then in the top ones here, I've still got lots of really small scraps. So it's things like this that I use for bag making and I don't throw any of these away, look. These get used for tabs or embellishments and different things and these are just full, these are just crammed with scraps. So I'm trying to use these top two for scrap fabrics, so that's what they're for. And then over here, this is not its permanent home, but I've got my box full of bird magazines and all the patterns that I've cut out from them are stored behind. So as you can see there's just one little corner. Then I'll bring you back a little bit. 
So I've got the doorway where we come in and my mannequin just fits in this corner here just as we come in through the door. So literally there's the door and then here and then the wall comes out. So it's a very small area. I've only got this much space beside the door. But it's the perfect place for my mannequin just there. So this is this corner. I'll turn you round. So here look, we can see, here is the wall beside the mannequin. And we have my overlocker, or serger as they're called also, in this corner. And this bench, which goes from this wall here, which comes over the stairs in our house, to the wall at the opposite side here, so I'll just bring you around so you can see. That is the full length of it, so it's not that long, that wall. My husband put the battens on the wall and made this bench for me so that I got a full length desk when I moved into this room. So when I'm using my overlocker, I just move my chair along and just use it here in this corner. I do pull it out a little bit, for it's a little bit cramped, but that's where I use it. As I said, I've just recently added my thread holder here, which my husband got me for Christmas. I was going to buy one and then I spoiled the surprise. He bought it already. So I spoiled that by announcing I was about to order one. And I've got some nice little bits. I've got my Diane sewing room. My good friend of mine bought me this with my name on it. And also the button tub there with the pin cushion in the top. She got me that as a gift. <laughs> and then I've got my ideas board above it there, which I made from an old picture frame. And I made the bunting. I've got some fabric samples. This is... I could clip that, I can add my patterns or ideas what I'm working on. I've got a few of these, I've, I've not used the others yet, so I don't know what I'm going to be using those for, but I would like to utilise those. So there's usually my ongoing project up there, and then a tape measure and a bird, a postcard and things, and I made this little bunting, I might change that soon. There's some, some more threads. So here is my sewing machine. So it's Singer Heavy Duty, that's the current one that I've got. And also, below my bench, which this is more messy, but I will show you. <laughs> below my bench, on the floor, I've got a bag full of packaging, so I like to reuse all packaging. So any packaging that comes my way goes in that big carrier there. I've got a sewing machine down there, which a neighbour donated to me after his wife passed, and it's a very good machine. I don't use it at the moment. I have tried it out and it is full working order. So it's a really good spare to have and I have tried it a few times. I've got a box here full of overlocking cottons and also some notepads that I use. I use a bag to catch my threads and then I just empty them into the bin. I don't want a big bin taking up space in here. And below it I also have another sewing machine there with a cover on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is one that I use mainly now for buttonholes. And that was a Toyota machine that I've had for years and years. It's a really strong machine. And that one, I did just now use it for buttonholes because the buttonhole attachment on my Singer stopped working after about a month. And I really should have sent it back, but being busy with work, I didn't have time for that. So that's what's happened. I'll bring you over here and I'll sit back down because just talk, I'm just talking. So I'll just show you this corner. So I've got another tripod light here when I'm filming. I've now got three. Um, the one that I'm using, this one is not switched on. Another, another one over there. Now this latest one my son's brought me for Christmas. So that was a really nice gift because they know that I would use it. And then over here, I've got some more cotton and needle storage in here. Some on top, the ones that are out that I use regularly. My pin cushions and my scissors are stored in a big mug here that I store all my scissors in. And then I've also got another little tub here that's got various bits bias binding and some other sort of notions and things. So that's just this section. And then I've also got some jars which I store my bag making uh, rings and D-rings and buckles and things like that. So they're just stored in jars behind me. So that's this corner. Underneath the bench here we have a big box full of patterns. So that's a plastic tub full of patterns. There is a little table that I've placed under there with a box with interfacing in and some more patterns on top. 
Then we've got just a small wall here with a radiator on. Like I said, it's only a small room. And then I'll flip you around again. And just here I've got the wardrobe. So this used to be my son's wardrobe when he was in this bedroom. But now it's just full of all sorts. So there's a big shelf at the top. I won't show you completely inside. It's very untidy at the moment. This is my next tidying up job. It's got a little bit of overflow clothes in this side. <laughs> it's got all my handbags stored in boxes at the top and covered. And my brochures and pouches and things that I make on my Etsy shop. And I'll talk more about that in a moment, in case you don't know about that. And then in the bottom there are more patterns, fabrics, and not very many fabrics, because like I say, I only keep the scraps. I don't buy, I don't fabric hoard or anything like that. If I buy a piece of fabric, I do use it straight away, usually. I've got a couple of pieces I haven't, and that's maybe two at the moment. The rest of it is for work. And what else have I got in here? Uh, some more threads in the bottom and a couple of magazines. So, so these were originally uh, the built-ins that were in my son's bedroom when it was a small bedroom for him. So on this side what we did is we made him a custom bed that fit at the bottom. So a standard bed wouldn't fit exactly. It was just an inch, I think it was, too big for a standard. So he had a fitted bed at this side, single bed. And above it there is these units which were already in when we moved in. Now these had doors on. I've since taken those off and wallpapered the back of the cupboards. And this is my addition yesterday, the plastic tubs I was talking about, because I couldn't find any more boxes to put the uh, scrap fabrics in. So up here I've got some scrap fabrics, I'll show you more of that in a moment. Here I've got my sewing box, um, one of them, I do have three. And then I've got some pouches and some packaging string, some elastics and things up here. This thrifted tin over here you may have seen before if you watch my videos has got zips in and then the box up there is a tea box that I repurposed and turned the other way around and that's also got zips in so that's that side and then this side I've kept the cupboard doors on and again we've got more fabrics and fabric samples in here I'll open that up. So up at the top is all card making things. Now I didn't buy any of these, I was gifted these. Somebody did a house clearance and they gave me lots of paper folders with card making things in and I've kept those and I do use them. Some things are wrapped in tissue paper up there to keep them safe and some card making stamps and things. This used to be one of my sons again, this bird and I've not had the heart to part with it. Here are some of the boxes I've repurposed for fabric. So we've got some fabrics and linings in here. There are some samples in this one, which are now falling out of the box because I've touched it. <laughs> some more old jeans that have been gifted by people and I do use these for bag making. And then these boxes are full of fabric samples. And I will show you how I've stored those in the box so that they're easy access in a minute. So I can just pull it out and they're stored so that I can see them. And there's a box here, a tub here. With fabric scraps in. So that's the room pretty much. So now I will show you how I store some of the um, fabrics in the boxes and also the pattern storage. So this here is how I prefer to store my patterns and when I've got time make things like this. So this is a cardboard box covered in fabric and I've added two faux leather handles either side. And as you can see this is bursting at the seams and as I've said before I don't buy lots of patterns. The reason I've acquired so many is because I, they are used for work. So a lot of these are when I do fabric samples and sew alongs and so on for my work. So that's why I've got a lot of patterns. Now. This was fabric left over from a dress and it's got a different colour on the bottom. So I was trying to do some scrap busting there. And this is fabric that I use in some of my handbags. So I have some already and I just made some handles. So that is some of my pattern storage in that one. Sometimes I just use shoe boxes. This is one of the tubs that I was talking about. Now I've bought a couple more of these as I said yesterday just purely for the fabric situation. So this is stored in plastic. 
but like I said, had I had the adequate boxes, I would have used cardboard for that. And I don't intend on buying any more. I'm going to keep on top of things now and make sure people pass on their cardboard boxes to me in future. Because that's what I've used for the rest of my handbag storage and so on. So that's that. So I thought I'd sit down a minute so you can actually see me. <laughs> And this is how I've stored fabrics yesterday. So what I did was I had a big clear out and there was an awful lot in there that wasn't really any good, um, just scraps that I would never use again. And they've literally been in bags stuffed in the top, that top cupboard there for a couple of years. So if I'm not using by now, I'm never going to use them. And there was all sorts in there. I don't even know why I saved them, but I do hate to part with um, fabrics because you wonder what's going to happen to all these things that we get rid of, don't you? But sometimes it is unavoidable. If anybody's got any ideas of where they can go in future, I would love to know. Please let me know in the comments below, even the smallest amounts. If there's a better way of disposing of these, I would like to know. So please get in touch. I know there is uh, fabric banks down at the supermarket, but they tend to be for like larger items of clothing and so on that get uh, taken and sorted elsewhere so I didn't really want to be just putting any just scraps in there because I don't know if you're allowed to do that. So please let me know if you've got any ideas. So this is how I've stored my fabrics in here. So it's a little bit like the Conmarie method that people use for organising their clothing. I've folded them and stood them up. I've not used a board or anything I've just sort of rolled and stood them in and packed them in as I went. So none of these are full pieces, so you may be thinking, oh, I've got lots of fabric here, but there is lots of fabric, but not in terms of, there's not meterage for making full garments. So these are pieces that have been left over from when I've been doing my work, and I have a biggish piece left, or a big piece, and the smaller parts, you know, from down the sides when you're cutting out your pattern pieces, but not a metre or even a half a metre in some instances. There are thin pieces, it, they just all look even by the way that I folded them. But what they are good for is they are good for if you're making something and you're going to do a contrast pocket, or if you're making a handbag and you want to line it, or anything like that where you need smaller amounts of fabric or some patchworking and things like that. So they're all different kinds that I've put in. So some chambray, there's some French terry, there's some viscose and there's some cotton in there as well. So you can see. So I've managed to fit a lot in but like I said they're all odd size pieces but too big to be thrown away or wasted but not big enough to make a full garment with any of them. So I've got two baskets up there like that and then I've got a box and another basket in the one above me and they're all pieces like this. And like I said, I don't want any of them to be wasted. So um, I'm going to ask a couple of friends if they've got any ideas, if they want to do anything with any of these as well. And then I will pass them on. Because if you were making like a patchworky top, because I've done things like that before. A patchwork sweater or sometimes a colour block t-shirt, they are great for that. So that's something that they could be used for. So I may use a few of them up in this coming year with some ideas for future videos. Okay, so that's that. Now here we have my Bird and Magazine collection. So what I do here is I've got my magazine and then inside I've got the pieces so that they've been taken out and this magazine has had things made from it. Then they're usually stored behind here. So They've all got one of these in because usually I've taken out the pattern pieces already and they've been traced off. So this one I can see, look, I've got one here. So this one says Casey's dress and the size because I made a vintage dress for my son's girlfriend a couple of years ago and the pattern is there for that. And I've wrote her name on it because I know that that's for her and that's her size for that particular dress. So that one's in here. Here, I've made this hoodie again recently. So I made this for my husband on Christmas Eve as one of his extra presents. And this time we did go for the colours in the 
uh, image. So if you've seen the hoodie uh, so along, you will have seen that make in a green and a pale blue. And I've now made it in those colours for my husband. So the pattern pieces are here with that one. So they're all just stored like this in this box. So here we have a cardboard box, which you keep all the magazines in and all the patterns stood behind it. And I've also got some other tall patterns in here. So there's some style art ones because they come like this. So they're the indie pattern and they're slightly different to the small pattern packets. So I store these behind my birdie magazines because they, they just fit in there nicely. So I also thought I'd share, in case you're interested and you like what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing today. So this is a dress and it is a loose fitting dress before anybody uh, thinks to tell me that it's loose on me because it is meant to be. <laughs> it is this dress and it's Simplicity 8910. So I've made this before for work so there is a sew along for this over on, or there will be. I can't mention it. I can't mention it yet because I don't know if it's been on yet. So there is a sew along for this dress. <laughs> I will mention it in future when I know it's definitely out there. And you can make it three different ways, like this. And I made the cover version. So it just pulls on over your head so it doesn't have buttons or a zip fastener. So it is loose. And I've got a top underneath today because it is winter at the moment here. So sort of three quarter sleeves you've got pleating and the shaping goes down at the back like this. So it's low at the back and it's just above the knee and it's got these pockets which are a nice shape look like this. And they've got binding on in the same fabric and the nice pleats at the front. And I wear this quite a lot. I do like it. It's a nice, really nice shape. So it's this one. And what I tend to do is when I'm making things, I get the project planner sheets that I get with the fabric when I'm doing the work and I write it all on here like this with a fabric swatch and I wish I'd started doing this sooner because it's really easy to look back and find what you've used and I didn't always used to use these and now I do and I write the fabric and the thread and draw the picture and I put them on here but I'm going to be doing something new in the new year so I'll do another video on that and I've just got the perfect scrapbook for it so I've all, I also do them on paper look, so you don't have to use the special pro, uh, project planner sheets. So here I've just wrote project, I've drawn the dress, the fabric swatch and the fabric details here just on paper out of my notebook. So I've got a big stash of these like this, but now it's how to store them. So that's why I'm thinking of doing something different in the new year. So, oh, the fabric for this dress as well, if you're interested, it's from Minerva Fabrics and it's called Painted Bouquet and it's a viscose chalet and it's one of their exclusive fabrics. So that's what this is. And I really like this dress. So what I'm thinking of doing in the new year, I've got a big scrapbook, which I've not used and it was gifted to me a couple of years ago. And I think these things do come in handy sometimes uh, just when you need them and you, you have them around and you think what I'm going to use this for and then the idea comes to you. So instead of doing the separate sheets of paper and wondering where to put them, something else to store, what I've decided is I'm going to use a scrapbook and I'm maybe going to divide it into four squares per page because it's a biggish one like this and I'm going to write each project in one of the squares along with the notions, the fabric, a sample, and maybe if I get round to it, an image, a photograph. So I won't do that every time. Maybe I'll do that once a week or once a month, print off the photos of me in it and stick that in there as well. I know it seems like an extra job for the new year, but I think it'll be really nice to look back on with me doing quite a bit of sewing for my work. And also I send quite a bit of it on or it's for other people. And then you forget what you've made. And I think it's nice to look back on if you've got it all in a book like that. So that's something I'm going to be doing. So hopefully I'll be able to share that with you more in the new year. If you're watching today, whatever you're up to, have, you have a lovely evening. Enjoy your new year celebrations. I will just be here having a quiet night. I may even do some more sewing. <laughs> So all the best for the new year. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave me a comment below and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. 
and I will be back with you all in the new year. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.